But wait, we've seen a pattern like this before. We've been using C Sharp and you're more familiar with the language. So a really popular thing that we do in software engineering is process data. And often when we're processing data, the way that we structure that in code ends up looking like we're doing something in one stage and then moving on to another stage that uses the output from that. And we kind of chain these stages together. Fortunately for us, there's a design pattern that we can use to accomplish this. And that's called the pipeline design pattern. In this video, we're going to look at some C-sharp code to be able to set up a pipeline for processing some data. We'll see how we can define our pipeline stages and how data is going to flow from one stage to the next. Before I bring up the code, just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for my free weekly newsletter. All right, let's dive into Visual Studio. All right, so the code that I have on this screen right now is just a quick little console application. And what we're going to be looking at is how we can get some text input and process that through some different pipeline stages. So you can see that I'm just writing to the console to ask for some input, and then we're going to get that input out of the console. And eventually we're going to output the result of the pipeline once we're done processing it. But it's important for us to understand what it means to be a pipeline in code. Well, as I was mentioning in the intro to this video, the idea behind a pipeline is that we're going to have data that goes into one stage of the pipeline, and that's going to be a foundational building block of this design pattern. So information goes into a stage, it does some type of work, and then information comes out of that stage to go into the next. So in this particular case, you can see that I've just mocked up some pseudo code here to have some process in input stage in our pipeline that we might have, and it's going to take some input, and I should have put input right here. So we would get the input passed in to this stage, and then you can see that we get the output, and I'm just assigning it to a dummy variable for this pseudocode to show you the pattern, right? So once we have the output, we then go put that into the next stage of the pipeline, and we're calling that clean text in this case. So that stage of the pipeline would run, and then we get the output stored into a variable. And this pattern continues for the pipeline. That's the whole idea is that we go from one stage to the next. And this is a really simple pipeline approach. So we get all the way until we're summarizing that final step from count words, and we get a summary output. From there, we write that to the console. And in a pipeline design pattern, this part is what we would call the sync. So that's the end part of the pipeline where the data is written out to. If you've done some work on the command line, you've probably seen the pipe character get used and we're piping data from program to program, especially if you're working in Linux, right? That's more common that you'd see that. And then sometimes you might see that we're you know, outputting stuff to null or something like that on the command line, like the null device. And that's because we're saying that's the sync of the pipeline that we're doing because we don't care about the output, right? You would write the output to null. In this case, we do care about the output, so we're going to write that to the console. But this is really just kind of like a dummy setup for, uh, you know, some pseudo code for how we could make a really simple pipeline. But I figured for this video, we can go implement this pipeline, we can see how it works, and then talk about this design pattern. So there's many different ways in C Sharp that we could go implement a pipeline to do this, but I'm going to start by introducing some delegates. And delegates, if you're not familiar, they're just method signatures that we get to work with. So this is just defining the signature for a method that we'd want to have that's called a text cleaner. It returns a string and it takes a string input, right? It's very similar to if I would define the method, right? Just like this here, and then I could return something in here, do the work, right? So this is basically saying the same type of thing as this delegate. It's the same signature. But the reason that we have a delegate instead of just defining the method is because we're saying that we want to have almost like an API that we're working with. And you can see that we're going to have three different methods we're working with. And you could, if you're interested, you could implement this with interfaces instead. In fact, I'm going to show a more complex variation of this after this video where we can define a cohesive interface for our pipeline stages and automatically put the pipeline together. That's a little bit more complex, so we'll wait till after this video in order to do that. So these method signatures, these delegates, are going to define the different stages that we want to have in our pipeline, right? So they do kind of match up with what we have up here. So you can see text cleaner would be this one. We have a word counter for count words, text summarizer for the summarize one. So these are going to map to the signatures that we want to use in our pipeline. 
but we have to go implement these things. So the way that we would go implement these delegates is to define them in this type of syntax here. So to explain what I mean by that, this part that I have highlighted is in fact a method implementation. So just this part is the body of the method from line 15 to 18. Text is going to be the input parameter. And then we're taking this and saying that we want to assign this entire function into the variable that's called cleaner. And the type of that variable is that delegate type. So it's a little bit confusing. I'm going to say it one more time because this is important to grasp in order to, to kind of move forward on this. But this is the body of a method from line 15 to 18. Text is that input parameter. So again, I'm going to scroll down so you can see it. But remember, this text cleaner needs one string that's the input, right? So scroll back up. That's this parameter here. And that means that this that I have highlighted, which includes the text parameter and the body from 15 to 18, this is an implementation of the function. All that we're doing is assigning that implementation of a function to a variable called cleaner. And then we're saying that it has the signature called text cleaner. And it does, because if we change the signature to be something like this, right, this is not going to be compatible with the text cleaner signature that's on that delegate. You can see that it's moved the squiggly line to indicate an error up to here because it's like, hey, like this isn't looking good. So let me backspace that. Now we have it nice and clean, but what we don't have is the implementation yet. But I just want to walk through these parts first before we go make the implementation. So in this case, if we look at word counter is our next stage in the pipeline, it takes in the clean text. Right? So that's going to be the input parameter into this function. We would have to go implement the function here in the body. And as you might imagine, if we go to the final stage in our pipeline, this text summarizer, it takes the word frequency. That's the input to this stage, but it's the output from the previous stage. So that means if we were to look at word frequency, if we look at the type of that, that's going to be a dictionary keyed by strings and the values are integers. And I know that without seeing it written out here, which we could do explicitly, but I know that because that's what this is here. It's a dictionary keyed by strings with values that are integers. And if I look at text summarizer, that's the type of this delegate. So it's able to infer, the compiler is able to infer what this type needs to be. So these are the three different stages that we have, but let's go see if we can come up with an implementation for these. This part, the implementation, isn't so important, so I'm going to go kind of quickly through it, but I just want to have some type of implementation here so that you can see these pieces working together. Let's start by making our text cleaner implementation. All that we're going to do is remove the punctuation and convert that text to lowercase. Why? I mean, no good reason. This part's not really important. I just want to make the state and then we can look at how this works when it's wired up. But quickly, as you can see, we're going to take all of the characters where it's not punctuation, so we're removing them, and then we take the output of that and make it too lower. So that's going to be our cleaning stage, and that means when we return this text, that's what's going to be fed into this next pipeline stage. At this point, we still haven't wired up the stages. We're just making the implementations of the stages first. The counting stage is going to be a little bit more complicated, but it's still not so bad. So we're going to take in that clean text like we talked about. And what I'm going to be doing is counting the frequency of the words that we have inside of that input text that's been cleaned, right? It's not the original input text to this point. It's the part from the stage before, which is cleaned. It's all lowercase and it has the punctuation removed. So what we're going to be doing is declaring a dictionary up here, and then we're going to go through each of the words and we can do that by splitting the text on spaces. We'll check if it's white space and just kind of skip over that. That's not really important for us, but we're going to try checking if we have this word already that we've come across with a count, we're just going to get the count out post free increment it right so this will increment it first and then we're going to assign it into the dictionary back at that word location and otherwise if we haven't seen it we're going to initialize it right to one right so the first time we come across it we'll add that to the dictionary with a count of one but we loop through all the words and then we make sure that we're counting all of them 
That's all that we're going to have for this stage, so let's move on to the next stage. All right, and the implementation for our summarizer stage is a little bit arbitrary. We're just going to pick the top three words, and we're going to pick the top three most frequent words that we came across. So that means we're going to write some link here. We'll do order by descending so that we can get the highest counts first. We're going to take the three, like I had mentioned, arbitrary, but that's what we're going to do here. And then we're just going to pick the key because the key is the word. From there, we're just going to format a string that says the top words are, and then we're going to write them out. If we wanted to, we could also include the count, but in this particular case, we're just going to take the top words. So I've just gone ahead and collapsed all of the stages to our pipeline, but we still have the work of combining them together to make the pipeline. They're just individual stages right now. Nothing calls them. Nothing's hooked them up. So let's go do that part next. The important thing to remember here is that these are not method bodies that we've called and defined outside of a method. This whole thing is a top level program. So these are in fact variables, which is a little bit weird to think about because I think a lot of the time we're used to seeing methods written out as separate methods. But to make this a little bit more obvious, these are my pipeline stages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let apparently Copilot go complete all this code for me. So if I press tab, we'll get clean text. And then if I press enter, what I hope to see is it's going to pass the clean text into the counter. So word frequency, right? So we count, that's what this counter pipeline stage. We'll pass in the clean text. We get the word frequency back out of that. And hopefully Copilot is on a roll here. We get the summarizer called with the word frequency. So you can see this kind of pattern where it's zigzagging, right? We take the input, pass it in, then we get clean text. That becomes the input to the next stage. The word frequency becomes the input to the next stage, so on and so forth, until we want to go write it out. So I'm just going to take this console write line that we had originally, and we can write out the summary. This is a really simple pipeline that we've just built together in C Sharp. It has three stages, and the sync is going to be this console write line, and we're wiring it up manually, as in I just define this explicitly by hand how we pass data from one stage to the next. Now, let's go try this out to prove that it works. All right, so with the program running, we have to come up with a phrase that I can add in here that's going to have a couple of repeated words so that we can see something interesting in the analysis. So let me come up with something good. All right, so the text that I'm going to use is Dev Leader is an awesome YouTube channel. If you watch YouTube, then you should check out Dev Leader. Now, I'm a little nervous because I'm going to press enter here, but I'm trying to make sure that I've counted in my head the right number of things that I'm expecting to see. But let's just try it out. The top words are dev, leader, and YouTube. So that is what I was expecting to see. That's good news. But what's interesting, and I forgot about this, is that the three stages of our pipeline, the first one is going to take all of the punctuation out, right? That's not such a big deal, but it also makes it lowercase. So I was a little bit confused when I saw it all lowercase, but totally makes sense. That's the very first stage of the pipeline. So if you're doing a quick double check and looking up at the top here, I had YouTube twice, right? So YouTube, YouTube. Dev is here and leaders right after, but it's also right here on this part of the text as well. So it seems to check out. That's good news. But wait, we've seen a pattern like this before. If we've been using C Sharp and you're more familiar with the language, there's something built into C Sharp that a lot of us use regularly, and it's structured almost the exact same way. Can you think about what it might be? Well, let me head back over to the code and let's modify this a little bit. And I'm going to show you something that's built into C Sharp that does something just like this. Not the specific implementation of counting words and that kind of thing, but the way that we've chained our different stages together. All right, I'm back in Visual Studio and the code that I had at the bottom of the screen that was a little surprise is right here now. So the design pattern with pipelines is really common with tasks. And a lot of the time we're used to writing async await code in C sharp, right? We have this async method we've defined and then we put await in front of it and call it and we're getting things that come back. And you might be familiar that you can go run some tasks in parallel with each other. You can, you know, wait for multiple tasks at the same time. But something you might not have tried is using tasks this particular way. We can say that we want to run a task. And then when the task is done, we're going to continue with 
yet another task. And then when that's done, we'll do the same thing. And what's interesting about this structure is if you're looking at the syntax here where we have task, task, and task, this is going to be the previous task. So what that means is we can take the result from the previous task and go leverage it in the next step. But this is just like a pipeline. The first task that we're running is the first stage, and then we chain them all together. And in fact, the last stage of the way that I have this here is going to be the sync of the entire pipeline. Let me go expand this and show you. The first part is the first stage that we had in our pipeline, right? We're doing the text cleaning. And the next part is going to be this word frequency part. We're counting the words. The next part, as you might guess, is the summarization, and we already know that the sync was going to be the console write line. In this particular case, there's literally no benefit or any reason to go structure it this way with tasks. I just wanted to illustrate that tasks afford us this opportunity to effectively build a pipeline with the same type of syntax. So, so far, what we've seen is that we're able to build up pipelines with individual stages, and pipelines are defined by these stages that we chain together. Each stage has some input and some output and we take that output and pass it to the next input of the next stage. Now even though these were simple pipelines you can in theory run pipelines that have stages that tee off and you're running multiple different parts of a pipeline and you could go do that in parallel. But something else that we looked at in this video was setting up the pipeline stages. We defined some delegates that we wanted to have for the different stages and then manually wired up the inputs to the outputs so that we could go run it. Well if you're interested in seeing how you can structure a pipeline that has a bit of an automatic configuration you can check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.